Um, I'm Wade Symington. That's Robert Hughes. We're your uh, ACE faculty liaisons uh, from here at Penn Highlands. Uh, so we'll touch on syllabi and textbooks. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about our expectations. If any of you guys are like unsure, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing uh, on your part. Uh, we'll look at resources that you can get through our MyPeak page and that you can get through the Pearson's My Math Lab service. Uh, we'll discuss the protocol for site visits. Uh, Robin will talk uh, briefly about a new course that we're offering here at Penn Highlands and thus like a new course that you guys would be able to offer it there uh, at your high schools if you'd like. And uh, lastly, we'll discuss assessment. You know, the big, that's going to be the big talking point for the night is uh, the assessment. Like, what do you have to do for the assessment? Uh, <laughs> All right, gang. Okay. Let's talk about syllabi and textbooks. Uh, so I, I'm under the impression that uh, they, they included the syllabi for you guys that are in, in your packets that you got there. Um, you can also access them through the MyPeak page. Uh, on the ACE page, uh, you click on the math department, and then you select your course. Um, I'm sure if you haven't taught them uh, an ACE class for us before, you might be you know, questioning you know, what exactly am I supposed to do. Uh, so as far as content goes, uh, the learning objectives that are listed on that master syllabus that you guys all have, um, that's the content that you need to cover. Right? You can cover more, but you can't cover less. You can teach it uh, any way that you want to, uh, as long as you're teaching it you know, at, the, at the college level. Um, and you know, as far as grading goes, you know, we're, we're expecting uh, grading to be done like as it will be done at, at the college level, so um, by that we're not big on extra credit. Um, I know some of you guys do have to offer extra credit. I, some high schools, they make that like a, a mandatory policy. If that is the case, I ask you guys to please keep two separate grade books. One for your Penn Highland students, uh, which is an unadjusted grade, and then one for your actual high school. Uh, on that MyPeak page, uh, the, the one that we were talking about under that math department page that's on there, uh, Robin and I recently have populated that with uh, some resources for you guys. And there's been stuff on there from past years. Um, but uh, so if you go to the MyPeak, ACE, math, your course page, uh, some things you might see on there uh, would be like sample lectures uh, from one of our courses, uh, Robin and I's courses that we teach here at Penn Highlands or maybe a sample test. Yeah, my math lab is a great tool for resources. Uh, and it, it, as far as the, well, let's transition to that. What, what do I have to listen to? You could get publisher PowerPoints, uh, publisher videos, animations. You can get test questions. There's like a test bank on there uh, and more. Um, if you have access to the Pearson My Math Lab, you can also uh, get uh, the Test Gen app. If you guys are familiar with that, T E S T G E N, um, and the uh, Pearson Instructor Resource Center has a bunch of uh, test banks for for our textbooks um, that you can use uh, to design test questions. Or what I like to do is it's easy to do exam reviews with that because you can just really quickly put together like a you know like 50 to 90 questions uh, on whatever chapter you just covered. Let's, oh yeah, stat crunch. Jim, you're teaching uh, statistics this semester, or this year. Um, I know a lot of schools have, you guys have like the calculators, the TI-83s or 84s that you guys do statistics on. And I know Excel is a pretty powerful statistics tool, but uh, stat crunch is also a great, a great statistics tool. I like it better than Microsoft Excel. I know you must go. So I think let's start with MAT 131 and work our way up. Okay. There's a couple things we mentioned, uh, including publisher PowerPoints and et cetera. So depending on the class you're teaching, uh, you know, the, maybe the availability of the res these resources might be a little bit limited, but pretty much every, every uh, textbook offers publisher PowerPoints. Um, you guys can access these through the multimedia library. And it's pretty simple to navigate. You just pick a chapter, uh, particular section. Uh, one, they have a 20-minute video here. Uh, that is a section video lecture. Um, this is what I, I send my students to if they miss class, and, and they email me and they say, you know, what do we cover? 
you know, in addition to saying get the notes from the students, from a classmate, check this, uh, check this video out. Option. Um, also, you're going to see there's animations. Uh, we have a multimedia textbook available to us, chap chapter test prep videos as well. Uh, I want to jump to my college algebra class. Yeah, and we can see this book has the, the PowerPoint available here. I could just click on that and it automatically downloads it. Um, and these are, I'll open this up. This PowerPoint is from, uh, our college algebra book is a pre-calculus textbook. That I'm sure you guys know that if you're teaching the the college algebra class, but this has, uh, it's, they're usually pretty thorough PowerPoints. It depends on the book, um, but they have like worked out examples and everything too. Again, this is something I direct my students to if they miss class and they, they need to get uh, the, the notes. The symmetry of functions here. This animation, uh, I think it's great. I use this every semester. Uh, I, I find that my students typically have trouble understanding odd symmetry. It's usually the first time they ever see symmetry through a point rather than across a line. Uh, so uh, this guided visualization that they have here allows us to select a function uh, depending on the function uh, right? and then whether it has symmetry or not you can collect, click the show symmetry and, and even the show coordinates option but the, the cool thing here is this play button where they can actually show you know how well this particular function you know, is symmetric with respect to the y-axis all right so like Wade said if you were just went to mymathlab.com this is what it would look like when you open it up you'd have all of these different options so he was showing you stuff in um, the um, multimedia, multimedia library. Media library this is the instructor side of it um, and I do a lot of things with this instructor resource. So he was talking about the PowerPoints. That's where you can find the PowerPoints all in one place rather than having to go um, chapter to chapter. So you can find all of them there. Again, this is like in the, on the instructor side. And then um, the solutions manual, I use that a lot. And again, it's by chapter. Here's the test gen that he was talking about. So all you have to do is click on it and um, download it, and you can pick questions from every single section, and like you said, put something together very, very quickly. So I'm going in on the student side, which is where um, Wade was before on the student side, so they can see all this stuff too. So like you said, you can send them to there. Let's go here, click here. But if you're trying to explain, um, uh, for example, the how the derivative works, that it's actually the slope of a tangent line. I, I like to show them these rather than them hearing my voice. I'll show them this. It's just it's a lot better visual than me drawing it on a chalkboard. Did you have a question, Stephanie? Yeah. So if you wanted to like send them to that video or just you know put that out there, is it something that I can post on my Google Classroom, or do they have to have a login? No, Would you I can like email them individually. You can download any. Uh, you can download. Well, the PowerPoints you can download. Yeah. I've never tried to download an interactive figure though. I've what never tried like to download videos? a video either. Have you ever tried mm -hmm. downloading a video? Marianne, have you downloaded videos? I, I use the videos in intermediate algebra. So you've downloaded and, them? And I do, yeah. Okay. I download them. I actually post them as a link okay. in our Schoology page. Okay. So it's, um, okay, so site visits. So, uh, you know, if it's your first semester doing this, you're most likely going to be observed either this, this semester or next semester. Um, besides that, we do it on a two to three year cycle. Um, after you're evaluated, uh, or the observation happens, uh, either Robin or I will send you that typed up observation form with our comments and our ratings which within. Doing, sorry. Yeah, which I'm doing tonight for you, Anne. <laughs> we'll do that within, uh, within a week of the observation. Uh, the purpose of these observations, uh, guys, is not to uh, critique your teaching it is really just to make sure that what you're doing in your classrooms is consistent with what we're doing in our classrooms here at Penn Highlands. Uh, when we arrive we will collect uh, samples of your ACE student work. Uh, we like to see, we like to get three samples. If we can we like to see an A sample, uh, a C sample, and an F sample. Uh, okay. Um, Robin, do you want to talk a little bit about this new course that we're offering here at Penn Highlands? Real quick, and we've offered it 
for a couple semesters now, but it's finally starting to take off. It's just, it's our version of liberal arts math. That's what most colleges call it, liberal arts math, and it touches on a little bit of everything, a little stats, a little personal finance, a little bit um, of logic. And you can see that's the, the course description. So if your school already offers something like this, then maybe have a discussion, or as a class you already teach, have a discussion with Kaylee or Sarah about making it an ACE class, and then they can get three more credits for it. So. Okay, so let's talk about assessment. Right? So this is one of the, the most important things that we do need from you, you guys uh, throughout the academic year here. Um, it, I know that in my welcoming emails that I send you, you folks at the beginning of the semesters, I include common assessment information. Um, that common assessment information is also available on the MyPeak, uh, the ACE page, uh, under the, the, the math department page on there. Um, this semester, this is different um, from what we've done in previous semesters, and this is due to the, the new NASEP standards uh, that we have to uphold. Uh, this semester, we are asking everyone to submit uh, common assessment information. So, um, after, your, after, after you do the unit test for whatever unit your, your common assessment question comes in, uh, we need you guys to record the results of your A students. Uh, there is a reporting Excel sp reporting spreadsheet uh, that's also available there on the MyPeak page and that we usually send in our emails to you as well um, that you'll record the results in and then you'll email those back to Robin or I um, after after you get them you know done. Um, record the results on the spreadsheet and email them back to your liaison within one week. Um, we, we really do ask that you do that. You try to get that done within one week of you administering that. Uh, it really s slows us down and holds us up if we get a bunch of those like during finals week uh, when we're already busy like grading our final exams and like uh, and we're submitting our grades and doing our assessment stuff for the for the things we're doing here at Penn Island. I think uh, that's that's all. Uh, here here's our contact information. My name, my email, Robin's name. Her email, uh, our office phone numbers, and then I, I do not mind if you guys have my, my cell phone number if you need anything. It, it is there. I am happy to help. So we post the question that we want you to put on your quiz or your test, and then we show you how we'd like it to be graded, and then according to a rubric, every rubric is different. It depends on the question. The rubric was designed based on what kind of question we chose. So this particular um, one of our colleagues wanted it to be, got one right, two right, three right. And then I'm going to flip over to where you would report it. It's right underneath the reporting spreadsheet. So some of you may only have one name on this, and that's fine. And it goes by course number, so here's 131. You're going to put your course name in there, and then the student's last name, and then however they want you to evaluate it, one, two, three, questions right. But then they want to narrow it down to, okay, which ones did they get right? Did they get A, B, and C? So that way we can keep track of which ones they got right and wrong. So there's the rubric, and if I go to 145, same thing. Give me a little bit of feedback as to why you think it happened, which parts they got right, um, and then it'll keep track. Like if this person got a three, they got three pieces right. I'm just going to type. Do you have to enable that in Oh, jeez. So if they got three portions right and they got B, and they got A, they got C, they got D. It's going to keep track for us which parts they got right. The more information we can get, the better. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, everybody have a safe, safe trip home.